Welcome to Cayman Turtle Center. A day of fun and adventure awaits at Cayman Turtle Center Island Wildlife Encounter. Swim and snorkel alongside sea turtles and other marine life. Meet tropical birds in the Avery, ride our turtle twister water slide, or simply relax by the lagoon. Plan your adventure today. Visit us online at www.turtle.ky. Good morning, and welcome to our brand new show, The Green Scene, hosted by Cayman Turtle Conservation and Education Center. Welcome to the green scene. My name is Geda Sislop. I'm the curator for terrestrial exhibits and education programs at Cayman Turtle Center. And today it's myself and my colleagues, Ms. Shauna McGill and Wendy Dandy. They are the education programs officers at Cayman Turtle Center. And we're pretty excited to be launching this new show, The Green Scene. So today is our first show. And we're going to want you to tune in on every Saturday at 11 a.m. right here on Bobo 89.1 FM. We're going to be talking about conservation, wildlife, and a lot more things. So each episode, we'll be exploring different topics related to conservation here in the Cayman Islands, including protecting our national environment and preserving our culture and heritage. And of course, it's a turtle center. So we'll be talking about sea turtles and other native species. Today, though, is all about Earth Month. And in case you haven't heard it, today is Earth Day, April 22nd, 2023. It's Earth Day around the world. Every year on April 22nd, the world celebrates our planet. So on today's show, we're talking about Earth Month. It's all about Earth Month here in the Cayman Islands. In case you don't know, today is Earth Day. April 22nd every year is Earth Day around the world and here in the Cayman Islands. So this celebration honors the achievements of environmental conservation and raising awareness for the need to protect our planet and all the natural resources, not just for today, but for the future. So at the Cayman Turtle Center, we've been doing our own part. This morning, we participated in the Chamber of Commerce's annual Earth Day cleanup. So Cayman Turtle Center staff were right out there on Barker's Beach early this morning. And we also held a turtle release yesterday on the 21st of and we also held a special turtle release yesterday in honor of Earth Day on Friday, the 22nd, 21st of April, sorry. And we'll be telling you a bit more about that this morning. So later on today, we also have a special guest on our show. Mr. Doug Brown from Junk Recycling, who will be telling us all we need to know about recycling. And we'll be telling you a little bit more about what we're doing at the Cayman Turtle Center to talk about recycling. So let's talk a little bit about Earth Month. Cayman Turtle Center is part of the Earth Cayman Islands Earth Day Committee. So at the Earth Day Committee, it's a multidisciplinary group. We partner with Department of Environment, National Trust, uh, Eco Cayman, the Botanic Park, Guy Harvey, just to name a few. And these are all organizations concerned with the conservation of our environment and our, and our culture here in the Cayman Islands. So we work together to highlight Earth Month and all that we need to do to protect our planet. But we start here in Cayman. So we start locally, but think globally. The theme for Earth Month this year is invest in our planet, which was actually the same theme as last year. And invest in your planet means take care of what we have here because it's not ours, it's for the future. And what we've done, to put it simply, is that we're all, we all got together and we're gonna celebrate Earth Month month of April. And what we're doing is we came up with four different themes for the, for, the, for the month. Each week, we're promoting a different theme. So reducing your carbon footprint, uh, connecting with nature, just getting out there, reducing plastics, of course. Plastics are a big issue. And get in the water. In the Cayman Islands, we're an island. We're known for our beautiful water. Let's get in the water. So we're going to talk a little bit about what Cayman Turtle Center itself is doing to participate in Earth Month. Shauna and Wendy and I, we're going to do a little discussion here, and we'll talk about that more after these messages. Welcome to Cayman Turtle Center. A day of fun and adventure awaits at Cayman Turtle Center Island Wildlife Encounter. Swim and snorkel alongside sea turtles and other marine life. Meet tropical birds in the Avery, ride our turtle twister water slide, or simply relax by the lagoon. Plan your adventure today. Visit us online at www.turtle.ky. 
The Green Scene, hosted by Cayman Turtle Conservation and Education Center. Okay, so let's talk about Earth Month. Uh, so in the Cayman Islands, we're celebrating Earth Month. Earth Day itself is 22nd, but we want to celebrate the whole month in honor of the Earth. So what we've done in Cayman is we've actually come up with, the Earth Day Committee has come up with themes for each week of Earth Month. So things like reduce your carbon footprint, connect with nature, uh, reduce plastics, and get in the water. But reducing the carbon footprint, that actually means that we're trying to reduce the amount of carbon we're putting out in the environment. So if you think about driving, right, that pumps a lot of carbon into the atmosphere. Uh, things like commuting or carpooling can help reduce that. Uh, you guys ever did anything like that? Wendy, you ever try anything? You ever did anything to try and reduce your carbon footprint? Oh, quite a few things. I think the number one um, and easiest one for people to do is um, adjusting their AC units. So usually, um, especially during Earth Month and summer when those rates skyrocket, uh, you want to turn up um, the temperature some. Uh, usually, I find in Cayman, people usually tend to sleep with the AC on 76 to 77, but 79 works actually pretty well and it saves a lot on the emissions um, that are emitted into the environment. Yeah, I guess you could add a fan to that. Yeah, and I, yeah, you can add a fan <laughs> to that as well. Yeah. Also, split unit AC is the type of um, AC unit that you use as well. Um, things like water. So instead of using one use uh, water, things like a Brita water filter, that's what I use. So mm. I save on plastic bottles um, and also water contaminated by one time use plastic as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Shauna? I mean, one of my favorite things to try to do is try to do meatless Mondays, or at least one <laughs> day out of the week, to try to reduce the amount of carbon that's being produced, because a lot of it is produced in the farming industry. That's so so just by simply reducing how much meat you consume in a week, you can help make the planet a better place. Or if you're feeling very adventurous, you can do a meatless week <laughs> once a month. <laughs> but I know for some people that might be a little bit difficult. Or if you really want to, you could completely transfer to a vegan or vegetarian diet. Well, at the Turtle Center, we're doing some, we're doing a few things to reduce our carbon footprint. One thing we do is, especially on cool days, we would turn off our ACs and open the windows. You know? yeah. Or like Wendy says, you can turn up the AC in your office just a couple of degrees because it makes a difference. What it does, in case anybody doesn't know, is remember the AC is run by electricity and it's pumping a lot of electricity. Electricity here in Cayman is powered by diesel. So the less electricity you use, the less diesel is being pumped up and creating carbon to go into the atmosphere. So you think of it that way. And it might one or two degrees might not seem a lot, but the more people we can get doing that, the less electricity is being used and the less diesel is being burnt. It's pretty simple. Definitely. Yeah. And then we have another next theme we have is connect with nature. So connecting with nature just means getting back out there. Fresh air and exercise, basically. That's what they used to do in the old days. That's why people <laughs> back in the old days were so healthy, especially in the old Caymanians. <laughs> you know, they were out there all the time. The fresh air and exercise. You know, so you guys do anything, can anything thing like that? Yeah, I feel like we're pretty spoiled living in the Caribbean. Right. We're, we're yes. surrounded by the beach and the ocean. Um, so we try not to indulge ourselves in it as much as possible. And I feel like that's a massive mistake we do. We're pretty lucky living where we live. So I know I try to go to the beach as much as possible, whether that's rum point Sundays or just going to the beach on Sundays. But I like to do a two for one mission. My dog really likes going in the water and swimming. So sometimes I'll take a break for myself, but also a break from him and take him on a little <laughs> morning walk on the beach. And he really loves it. And it's a two for one combo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you, Wendy? Oh, I'm always outdoors. <laughs> so I know a lot of great little spots. Um, I go to Barker's quite a bit. And also, side note, for those of you, there are quite a few locals I know that do know little spots and like to be outside. Always please bring a garbage bag with you. And yeah. whatever you brought with you, please take it with you. I always have garbage bags in my car, and it breaks my heart to pick up litter in these protected areas such as Barker's. But I do like to go to Barker's a lot. I have a portable 
Hammock that I actually bought at Splash, which is Ooh. our gift shop at the Cayman Turtle Center. And um, yeah, I keep that in my trunk and I always tie up a hammock randomly here and there after work sometimes instead of oh, heading wow. home. Well, that saves me a couple more good. hours with the AC off. So I'm always outside. I, as long as it's in the shade, I'm mm-hmm. always outside. Oh, yeah, it can be a good hammock seat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, most people that know me know that I like, I like the outdoors, too. Mm-hmm. I'm always out there somewhere, bird watching, exploring, hiking. Yeah. I plan all my vacations around, actually, yeah. nature excursions. So. <laughs> yeah, and Sean is right. I mean, people are paying thousands of dollars to come to Cayman to enjoy what we have. Why can't we enjoy it? Exactly. You know? mm-hmm. And at the course of the Turtle Center, we're outdoors all the time working out there. Uh, if you, you can, you yourself can do things like go for a hike. If you visit the Turtle Center, there's a chance to be outdoors, enjoy all, all swim in our lagoons, enjoy all the, all that we have to offer. And our aviary is like a little garden of Eden. We have people that come there just on the weekends just to de-stress, sit down there and just enjoy the atmosphere. Yeah, so appreciate our planet by being out there. So let's see, we have also have reduced plastics. And Wendy did mention you could take I a bag. I jumped the gun with that one. I'm sorry. Yes, I did mention a Brita yeah. water filters. Yeah, <laughs> Brita water filters, reducing plastics. Plastics are a big problem. And here at, at the Cayman Turtle Center, our job is to get those turtles back in the water. But one of the problems that they face, one of the big threats that they face is plastics. Because plastics are out there and they're they're going up the food chain out there in the environment. And you know, the more we can do to reduce that, the better. Yeah, so Wendy had some great ideas there. Sean, you had any, anything that you can do to help reduce plastics out there? So I'm one of the people, along with these other lovely people, that deal with our education programs at Cayman Turtle Center. And one of the programs I definitely try to encourage at Every single animal talk we do, any turtle release, and I try to do this myself, is just encouraging people to pick up three pieces of trash or plastic a day. You might not think that's a lot, (laughs) but if one person does that every single day for a whole year, that's over 1,000 pieces. And you were saying correctly that plastic and marine pollution is a massive issue. Loads of pollution enters our ocean every single year, and 80% of it comes from land-based sources. So you might not think picking up three pieces of trash on the land will impact the ocean, but it does massively. So just imagine if all of you listeners did that. We would cause an ocean of change in terms of the pollution and plastic issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I've done that. I, my wife gets really annoyed when I s- stop the car and run across the road to catch a <laughs> plastic bag that's <laughs> blowing across I agree with yeah. Shona. And no matter how small the piece of plastic is, it could be a bottle cap. That bottle cap could be all the difference in saving a marine animal's life. Yeah. Cigarette yeah. butts, too. Most yep. people don't realize that cigarette butts are made of plastic. They mm-hmm. think it's natural material, and mm-hmm. that's not the case. So even you think you're throwing down a cotton cigarette butt, you're not, and that's, help, that's impacting Absolutely. the pollution yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so the point is reduce plastics. I don't know if we can actually eliminate them, but we could definitely reduce their impact. Definitely. Uh, and then that leads right into the fourth theme, which is getting the water. All right, we're in the Cayman Islands. All right, <laughs> this is one of the top dive destinations on the planet. You know, we have blessed to have really beautiful waters, pristine reefs. You know, so why not appreciate it? The tourists do. Mm. You know, the, but I'll be honest and say that I don't go into water that much because <laughs> I'm a landlubber. Mm. I mean, I, run, I go on the beach, but I haven't been out snorkeling that much, but I do appreciate the ocean. Uh, so when was the last time you got on the water, Wendy? <laughs> last week. Last week. <laughs> See? So I would say, I mean, from the beginner to the more advanced, um, come into the center if you feel more comfortable having a lifeguard around. We do have our interactive turtle snorkel experience. And all the way to the more advanced person um, who scuba dives, Scuba diving, putting it on your bucket list to scuba dive in Little Cayman is a must site. We're actually on, aren't we nominated now to be a UNESCO World Heritage yes, Site? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, we are. So for the more advanced guys, I would say get out there in Little Cayman, put it on your bucket list. And for those who are trying to take it slower, we can start all the way at a inter- interactive snorkeling at our 
um, at the center or Seven Mile Beach, and there's five miles of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely a water baby. My mom has called me that since the dawn of time. So one of my favorite pastimes, like you touch upon, is diving. So I'm an advanced open water diver, and I've been really lucky okay. to dive around the world in Egypt. And here is very incredible diving. And you don't realize just how much energy you're putting into diving. It is actually very good exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After you dive, you are oh, very exhausting. Benefit exhausted sorry so there is a side benefit to diving not only do you get to experience the underwater world which is fascinating but you also get the added benefit of exercise too and zen and yeah. zen yeah and at the turtle center we're doing our own our own our own contribution to getting in the water like wendy said we have we have actually the largest inland water body of any kind of on, well available to swim in on the island Right, our snorkel lagoon, which is 1.3 million gallons, it's basically a giant fish tank, and with lifeguards around, it's it's safe for you to get in the water, experience marine life, you know, no sharks. No sharks. It, but Although also, sharks. most people might not know that we also have a mangrove exhibit, what we call the shoreline nursery. It was actually originally designed as a teaching tool for schools, because mangroves on the curriculum. But we also, but we also have a nursery, and we raise mangrove propagules or seedlings to plant out. And our contribution to Earth Month would be planting mangroves at a at a location in Barkers. And you can get more information on that at some point. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a little break. Uh, we have a special guest coming up, representative from Junk. He's gonna talk a little bit about what about recycling and what we're doing at the Center to Help Recycling. So, back in a few. Welcome to Cayman Turtle Center. A day of fun and adventure awaits at Cayman Turtle Center Island Wildlife Encounter. Swim and snorkel alongside sea turtles and other marine life. Meet tropical birds in the Avery, ride our turtle twister water slide, or simply relax by the lagoon. Plan your adventure today. Visit us online at www.turtle.ky. Welcome back to the green scene, everybody. My name is Shona, and I am one of the education programs officers at Cayman Turtle Center. So this first section of the green scene, we're talking about Earth Month and what you guys may be able to do to help us celebrate Earth Month at Cayman Turtle Conservation and Education Center, along with the rest of the world. So right now with me, I have Mr. Doug Brown from Junk Cayman to talk to us a little bit about what they do at Junk Cayman, but also what you guys might be able to do to celebrate Earth Month as well. So welcome, Doug. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, firstly, I'd like to just thank the Cayman Turtle Centre. Uh, we have a very close association with them, and I think we share a great synergy and uh, that our ethos is exactly the same. We care for the environment. Um, I've been asked to come and have a chat to you about recycling, and I think let's just um, pause and think, what is recycling? Recycling is the process of collecting and processing general waste which is destined for the landfill, and remanufacturing it into new products. So we're going to make it into something new. Junk is uh, a company that has uh, been around since 2013. Um, we are the only company that collects dry goods waste recycling products um, in Grand Cayman. Um, and uh, we, in fact, process them um, ourselves. Uh, and these are a number of um, recyclables, and I'll discuss about these just now. Um, how does recycling work in Cayman? It works very differently to it does in places like America or France or, or wherever. Um, and the first thing we ask you guys to do is we will supply bins uh, to you if you have a contract with us, and we ask you to start the recycling process. Um, we have bins for the various recyclable types, um, and these bins range from 6-gallon to 18-gallon for uh, home and uh, for office use to the um, 32 and 96 gallon bins, which are generally used by strata and uh, businesses. Where there is an industrial need for um, the likes of plastic and um, cardboard, we in fact will supply uh, two and four cubic yard bins. And we have a number of those out there, I promise you. So you do all the recycling, we then come along and we come and pick it up from you. We have a mantra, recycling made easy. We come along, pick it up, process it, it's out your hair. 
Awesome. Once we have collected it, we will take it to our recycle center where we do a check on it. In other words, we will go through looking for, especially in plastics, uh, contaminated products, etc., uh, which uh, could be a problem when uh, being exported. Uh, we remove those and they are, um, they are discarded. So please, um, we'll talk about how you can keep those things clean. From there, we've partnered with DEH. Um, they handle all um, the crushing and the baling of the recyclables. Um, and then they put them into containers. And from there, they're shipped to our waste management partners, uh, which are overseas. Okay, Doug. So why is recycling important? Some people might not know just why it's a necessity or why we should be partaking in recycling. Why is it important to recycle? Recycling is hugely important um, for sustainability of our environment. Um, Recycling reduces the amount of waste that goes into landfills. Up to 45% of our general waste can be recycled. Um, recycling also conserves energy of our natural resources, such as timber, water, and minerals. Uh, for example, corrugated cardboard can be recycled up to seven times. Recycling one ton of cardboard saves 4,000 kilowatts of electricity and 7,000 gallons of water. It's huge amounts that they're using it to is. do this. Um, recycling also prevents pollution, reduces greenhouse gases by reducing the need to mine and process new raw materials. For example, 99.99% of aluminium can be recycled repeatedly. There's enough aluminium that we do not need to mine bauxite. When plastic is recycled and manufactured or remanufactured, depending on the process, it saves between 30 and 80% of the carbon emissions that originally originally processing and manufacturing does. So it's really important that when you recycle, you are doing a lot to save our planet. Now, I know I personally was pretty shocked by some of those facts and figures. So I'm sure a few people listening right now are as well. And it's a fairly new concept, recycling here. So I'm sure some people might be wondering, what do we recycle here or what can we recycle here in the Cayman Islands? We are not the only people that are recycling. Uh, DEH has eight centers uh, around the Grand Cayman um, that uh, they service and have collection points um, at the landfill for things like oils, batteries, and various other products that they recycle. IWC processes ferrous and non-ferrous metals, uh, which they then recycle. We, however, um, process and concentrate on seven main recyclables. The first one is aluminum. Um, this is also re represented by a, a, a triangle, but I'll come back to that just now. Uh, corrugated and stiff cardboard. Um, we are limited to um, recycling paper uh, by virtue of our uh, waste management partner has uh, dictated that we can only send 15%. So any paper, et cetera, generally goes into the landfill. It is not a problem. Um, this degrades fairly quickly and in some respects actually aids the decomposition of other products. Um, Plastics type 1, 2, and 5. 5 is a new plastic uh, that we have recently um, uh, added to the, um, to the mix. Um, and we asked the question, how can you tell what, what the types of plastics are? Well, it's easy. On your plastic, if you have a look at the bottom or anywhere on the plastic, you will generally find a recycling triangle. It's a very well-known symbol. And within that symbol, you will find a number. So type 1 is your um, PETE. Plastics, it's the most common, um, well, not the most common, but it's a well-used plastic. It's your one-time use uh, water bottles, etc. Uh, type 2 is HDPE. That is a product that you use for milk cartons and uh, for laundry detergent bins or bottles. And type 5, which is generally uh, your polypropylene. It's uh, um, used for yogurt uh, uh, things. We also do uh, car and domestic batteries, um, all your AAA, AA, A, C, um, and different types of batteries. We, we've just started doing e-waste. Um, we also do the HP inkjet and uh, laser jet um, cartridges. You're probably asking, what about glass? Uh, glass is interesting. It's just been discontinued uh, in, uh, in terms of recycling in uh, the Cayman Islands. Um, we are working really hard uh, with interested parties to get glass recycling back on track again. Um, we can't give you any dates or we can't give you any further information, but believe me, we are working really hard to get this going. 
what not to recycle. I think let's let's uh, maybe mention a couple of the things. Please don't put pizza boxes into uh, your cardboard bin. Um, you know, there, there, there's problems uh, with regards to oils, etc. cetera. Um, diapers, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's a plastic, funny enough, it's a, it's a, it comes under the type 6 plastic. Um, but obviously it has other things in it which yes. we don't want to deal with. <laughs> and paper plates, motor oil, electronics, um, all of these things, we handle them separately. So don't put them into your general recycling. If you've got other things that you're unsure about, please, you're most welcome to give me a call. I think it's incredible just the amount of stuff you guys recycle on the island. Like Most of the stuff we'd use every day. So it's really good to see these initiatives being incorporated daily. But what are your top tips for someone who might not be as educated in recycling, might not know how to properly recycle, and might just want to start it to be good for the environment and eco-conscious? What are your top tips for someone just First of all, out? call junk. We'll do it for you. <laughs> That's the easy way. You know, at the end of the day, I, I really believe that you have to start small. Um, breaking habits can be difficult. And I, I have a favorite saying that I use in Africa. Um, how do you eat an elephant? A little piece at a time. So start off slowly until you can build up and you start getting as enthusiastic as the rest of us in this room. Um, purchase separate bins for recyclables at home. This makes it easier for you to say, I'll put aluminum in there, I'll put glass in there, I'll put my plastics in this one, and I'll put my cardboard in that one. It gets you into a routine and it allows you to, to understand and it helps you helping us start the recycling process. Um, find a public drop-off. Drop um, or location. If you go to the uh, DEH website uh, and search under uh, recycling, they will show you. There are eight uh, places that you can, and it's recycling there is free. Otherwise, as I said just now, you can subscribe for a curbside collection, which we do. We currently service uh, over 250 uh, customers at 350 points, um, and we are bringing in tons and tons and tons of, uh, of recycling, I can assure you. Further tips, Please separate your recyclables, as I mentioned, into the four main types, which is aluminium, cardboard, glass, and plastics. Uh, you make it easier for those uh, people who are, uh, start, uh, are processing the products. Rinse out aluminium cans, glass bottles, jars, and plastic containers to rid them of any contamination, as I've mentioned before. Nobody wants to work with smelly, rotten uh, recycling, so please help us. <laughs> we dispose of contaminated items we find. And when it is exported, the receiving country checks for any contamination. And if it is found, the whole container is returned to us at our cost. Shipping is expensive. Uh, look for the triangles on the plastics that I mentioned. Only types 1, 2, and 5 can be done. With regards to cardboard, please flatten the cardboard boxes. Just by doing this, you can fit up to five times the volume of cardboard into a recycle bin. Please ensure that cardboard is not wet. The moisture weakens the cardboard. Uh, fibers and making it difficult to recycle. And lastly, my pet, no pizza boxes, please. Please ensure the cardboard is not contaminated by any oils. Uh, the reason for this is that it disrupts the recycling process, rendering the cardboard useless. Now, I try to do recycling in my everyday life, so some of these tips I knew, but some of the new tips I learned have, will be really helpful for me going forward. I knew we recycle plastic. I didn't exactly know which numbers we use, so learning one, two, and five will really be helpful for me going forward. Now, I know us at Cayman Turtle Center, we've partnered with Junk a few times now. The most recent one being our Easter festival, where we invited kids to enter our park for free if they brought three pieces of plastic to be recycled by Junk Cayman. And I've heard we're also going forward with another partnership at Cayman Turtle Center with Junk as well. I am so excited about this. Um, you know, we've, we've had a long association with uh, the Cayman Turtle Centre and um, they are now going to be recycling and we are going to assist them to recycle. You know, the, the um, Cayman Turtle Centre, um, there are water points uh, within the uh, centre where people can utilise to get water for their reusable uh, uh, bottles. Um, however, they've moved away from one-time use plastics and now sell cans of water and aluminium, which is great. It really is great. We have uh, set aside 96-gallon bins, five of them specifically for aluminium, and these will be strategically placed around um, the center with clear signposting. Um, as plastic is not encouraged in, within the center, one of the 96-gallon bins will be dedicated 
uh, for patrons before entering into the park to put their plastics into. And we, we would really love that you guys do that. There will also be an aluminium uh, bin there as well. The center, interestingly, generates a substantial amount of cardboard at the gift shop and at the deli. But what I really found out for the first time was that even the food supplied to the turtles comes in paperboard cardboard sacks that can be recycled. Um, they do 20 a day. So if you can imagine you extrapolate that by 365, uh, that's a lot of cardboard. So kudos to you guys. Um, we've provided a two cubic yard cart that will be used to, uh, to process this, uh, this product. Uh, these recyclables will be collected once a week and the generation figures are issued monthly to the um, Turtle Center to understand exactly what contribution they are making towards the sustainability through recycling. Now, I'm really excited for this initiative to go forward. And us at Animal Programs, we have our own personal recycling program where we put aside cans and plastics. So I'm sure we would like to know, but also everybody listening would like to know, how do we get in contact with Junk Man if we want to start a recycling program? There's various ways that you can get hold of us. Uh, you can contact uh, me, Doug Brown, at uh, infojunk.ky. Uh, we also have a website, www.junk. And also, for a lot of information, um, we are constantly putting on pointers, tips, um, and, and news on our Facebook page, which is um, at Junk Cayman. And uh, we'd love for you to go on there and to, and to give us a like. Really, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Well, thank you so much, Doug, for joining us today. Our I, next, go ahead, sorry. I'd, I'd like to just thank you guys. Uh, you know, it's just awesome to be together with people that are like-minded, um, that really are wanting to conserve the environment. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm here for a, a certain amount of time, and I love the Cayman Islands. It is beautiful, it's pristine. And to be quite honest with you, um, there are a lot more like-minded people than people seem to think. There definitely is. Now, us, we work with turtles, so plastics are a huge issue for us, so learning these tips and tricks will be really helpful for us improving our carbon footprint going forward. So next up, guys, we're going to take a little break, but we're going to talk about our head starting program at the Cayman Turtle Center. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in a little bit. And once again, thank you, Doug. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Doug from Junk Recycling. We are the premier recyclers uh, in Grand Cayman. Please, if anybody would like us to undertake to do their recycling for them, please give me a call, 925-4374 or info at junk.ky. We start from about $50 a month for collections, but we make tailor make solutions for you. So if you're interested, give us a call. Welcome to Cayman Turtle Center. A day of fun and adventure awaits at Cayman Turtle Center Island Wildlife Encounter. Swim and snorkel alongside sea turtles and other marine life. Meet tropical birds in the Avery, ride our turtle twister water slide, or simply relax by the lagoon. Plan your adventure today. Visit us online at www.turtle.ky. All right, welcome back to the green scene, and this is Wendy on air with you. So we just had Doug from Junk earlier, who gave us a lot of useful information on how to recycle. But now we want to talk about the release we did yesterday for Earth Month. We had one of our annual Head Started Turtle releases. So Shauna, if you wouldn't mind explaining to our listeners out there, what is a Head Started Turtle? Yeah, so we try to make this as simple as possible for a Head Started Turtle. It's just a turtle that we give a head start in life. So this turtle was born and raised at Cayman Turtle Center with us. So its mom came up during the months of the nesting season and laid it as an egg on our breeder pond beach where we collected it and then we put it into our hatchery and took care of it for two months until it hatched out. And after that point, we've taken care of it since. Our head started turtles are usually between one to two years old. And at this point, their shell has fully hardened, which gives them added protection. So yeah, as the name implies, head started turtle just gets a little bit of a head start. Right. So basically the bigger turtles that you release are those head starters. So at that size, basically they have virtually no predators then. So yeah. That. So their shell has fully hardened and their only real predators at that point are really large sharks and humans. The downside to being a baby sea turtle is that the odds are forever against you. We think their survival rate is about one in 1,000. 
And with things like plastics, that might be even lower to maybe one in 2,000. Wow. Okay. So those tips from junk earlier <laughs> will be really <laughs> beneficial in helping us protect the baby sea turtles. All right. So for people who haven't seen one of your Head Started releases before, um, you are get it. So walk us through how does that look? How does that process take place? Okay, well, a head started release, like Sean said, it's uh, releasing one of the bigger turtles, a bit larger, stronger, faster. You know, they have a better chance in life. But all of our turtles, as we said, are raised at the center. Our job is to get them in the water. Once they hit the water, they're wild turtles, and they fall under the protection of national conservation law of the Cayman Islands, and basically and under the, become under the remit of the Department of Environment. But one of the questions that people tend to ask is that, we're raising these turtles, and we know that turtles always come back to the beach where they were laid or hatched to lay their own eggs. And how do these turtles that are raised in captivity come back to the beach? Well, what we do is we try to cover all the bases. We know that somewhere between hatching and hitting the water, that's where they orient their GPS. So when we do a head start release, we place a turtle on the beach, on the sand, and let it crawl its way into the water. That happens in various ways because different turtles have different personalities and different, let's say, zest. Some of them, we've had turtles just actually just fall asleep on the beach. <laughs> Put them down and they're just, okay, you need to move. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. And then we have other ones that just ran straight in. So, so they have different personalities. Yeah, they have different personalities. They have different eagerness to get in the water. So, But head starting the turtle is, a, is kind of a stressful thing for the animal, to be honest, because it's coming out of a, it's coming out of a tank and just into the ocean. But the good thing is that turtles are a very ancient species of animals. They've been around since before the dinosaurs. And they, they're full of instinct. So in that reptile brain, they very quickly become a wild turtle. And we've seen it at our own center because we have the inland lagoon, the turtle, snork the turtle snorkeling lagoon. We place turtles in there that have never seen the ocean before, never seen fish before. And within a, a day or two, they're acting like wild turtles. They're feeding on algae. They're rubbing the shells against coral to try and so get that evolutionary out. instinct is really strong yeah it isn't it isn't them so we don't you know one that's one of the concerns but just to address that yeah the turtles they pretty much take care of themselves once they get out there okay so another question i'd like to ask you guys um how do we know it's worked uh, have you seen any evidence with all of the turtles we have been releasing for what over 20 years yeah, well, the releases at the center officially started back in 1980. And since then, we've released, today we passed a milestone, we've released over 36,000 turtles wow. into the wild. And yes, they do come back. <laughs> we, actually have a, we actually have a whole separate study on that. But just a, a quick summary is that, yes, they are coming back. And over the years, what they've done was put, put a flipper tags on them, basically a, a titanium. <laughs> tag on the flipper like an earring and we've recovered turtles coming back that way and more recently we've started putting pit tags in our turtle like a chip that they put in a dog or cat so people can if a turtle comes up on the beach you can scan it and you can know it's one of ours and then even more recently there was a two-year study that was done a multinational study again we have more details on that in that and probably in another podcast but uh that study showed that Yes, definitely looking at the DNA of wild turtles coming out to, to nest in our beaches. Over 90% of those turtles, about 90% of those turtles can be traced back to our release program. 90%? Yeah, on wow. Grand Cayman. I think Shauna said there's a more recent number. Almost 80% in Little Cayman. Yeah. Because That's the, amazing. The mandate of the Turtle Center is to release, restore turtles on all three Cayman Islands, not just on Grand Cayman. So we've released turtles on, in the sister islands as well. Yeah. Oh, so you've done releases that uh, we do releases also on all three islands, yes, not just all three Grand Cayman. All right. So for people who would want to get more involved, especially since it is a breeding season and hatching season, are you guys ne in need for sponsors or volunteers? And if anyone's out there that's listening, that's interested, um, how would they go about that? Well, I'll address the volunteers because most of the volunteers pass through me. Uh, yes, definitely we can use volunteers. Uh, it's a lot of work taking care of these animals. Uh, we do it because we love it, but uh, it does, it's nice to have help. And we like to share, or we like to share what we do with other people. Uh, people actually feel better when they're involved with nature. So yeah, volunteers, you can contact us on, by email, info at turtle.ky. 
and in your in your subject matter just save volunteers and that most likely will pass to me uh, we are we have two types of volunteers those that work on site helping us with our animal care and whatever else we need to do and we have those that are off site sort of a standby group so when we have a turtle release or or some other event like that we can contact them and they'll tell us they'll let us know if they're available to help right. but uh, for sponsorship uh Shauna probably ha- can probably give us a little better idea now yeah, so we have three main different types of sponsorship options available. You can sponsor one of our public releases, like the Earth Day release that just passed. Okay. So if you want to play a part in that, our next upcoming one will be World Sea Turtle Day on June 16th. And then we also have our annual Pirates Week turtle release as well. So if you personally would like to sponsor one of those turtles, There are four different sponsorship options on that, which can be found on our website at www.turtle.ky. And then if you personally want to sponsor a turtle release for an intimate group of up to five people, we do have a private turtle release sponsorship option available to you. Or if you want to do a corporate sponsorship for your company or a much larger group, you can do that as well. And if you want to get involved with either our private turtle release sponsorship or our corporate turtle release sponsorship, you can email info at turtle.ky for more information. All right. Thank you for that information, guys. And one last question about public releases. Other than for this Earth Month release that took place yesterday, when would be the next big public release um, that the uh, community can get involved in? So our next public turtle release is arguably one of our largest, and that is for World Sea Turtle Day on June 16th, where it falls every year. So our next public release will be June 16th. And another question, our next one after that, will there be one for Turtle, uh, not Turtle Week, sorry, Pirates Week this year? There should be. There always is. We have our annual Pirates Week um, Just want to get that out there. That's always the most common question. Yeah, it's just (laughs) a little bit early, so we don't have a concrete date for it, but it'll fall within the week festivities of Pirates Week. All right. Awesome. Well, guys, we're going to take a break right here and we'll be back shortly. Thank you for the information you guys have shared so far about our Head Starting Release program um, at the Cayman Turtle Center. That's very interesting to know and it's exciting to know that 90% of the wild population has been brought back, which I'm sure we'll come back and talk about on another episode because that's a whole nother story. So we'll be back soon um, just after a few messages and thanks for tuning in, guys. Welcome to Cayman Turtle Center. A day of fun and adventure awaits at Cayman Turtle Center Island Wildlife Encounter. Swim and snorkel alongside sea turtles and other marine life. Meet tropical birds in the Avery, ride a turtle twister water slide, or simply relax by the lagoon. Plan your adventure today. Visit us online at www.turtle.ky. Okay, welcome back, guys. This is The Green Scene, hosted by the Cayman Turtle Conservation Education Center. I'm Geddes, and I'm here with Shauna and Wendy, and we're talking about Earth Month. So for Earth Month, here in the Cayman Islands, we're celebrating the four different themes. Uh, we're talking about reducing our carbon footprint, getting in connection with nature again, you know, reducing plastics, and getting in the water, enjoying the beautiful waters of the Cayman Islands. But, uh, you know, some of the things, that, that some of these themes that we've been talking about, and you know, I want to pass it over to my colleagues here. You know, we want to encourage you guys to come out there and actually participate in this. Earth Month isn't just is just one month, but the Earth is here all year round. You know, we got to take care of what we of the planet we live in. We we only have one planet, so you know, I want to encourage you guys to, to take take these themes to heart. And even if you don't get a chance to do it for Earth Month, you know, you don't have to wait till Earth Month to be take care of our planet you know but you know let's talk a bit about about these things uh reducing our carbon footprint you guys have come up with some good ideas earlier so what are the ideas or what how can you want, want to expand on some of these things yeah to so to reduce your carbon footprint there are quite a lot of different things you can do as we said earlier just turn up your ac by about three degrees and you're going to help the environment that way but another thing you can do to reduce your energy consumption is just by turning off your lights I know when I'm at home, I try to use as little light as possible as I can get through my house to try to reduce my own personal energy consumption. 
or even just as simple as unplugging electronics when you're not using them. I know we tend to forget them, <laughs> but that will also eliminate quite a lot of your energy consumption too. One of the things, the things we're trying to do at the center, especially in our office, but also you, that you guys can do at home, is just use energy efficient light bulbs and appliances. So if you can, try to change out the light bulbs in your house to more of an energy efficient option. And if you can afford it, <laughs> change your appliances to one a little bit more energy efficient too. And I'm sure, I definitely feel it because I drive to work from spots, <laughs> but the traffic in the morning <laughs> is a big issue, the congestion here. So one of the easiest things you can do to limit time spent in traffic, but also to help the environment is just, if you can, to walk, bike, or take public transport to work. Even if you just do it a few times a month or even one time a week, you're already having a massive positive effect on the environment just by cutting out that one day. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, I know that yeah, those kind of things. I myself try to, I live in West Bay, mm -hmm. work in West Bay. So <laughs> I always feel a bit guilty driving to work. <laughs> yeah. So I do try to ride every now and then. But I'm sure you guys out there can think of some other some other ideas you can do to reduce your carbon footprint. You know? But there are other things you can do. I mean, the other theme we have is connecting with nature. I am a nature person. I love going out in nature. I know what are the things you guys added you guys have that people can do? Yeah, so the second theme of uh, Earth Month, as you said, is connecting with nature. So get outside, get outside, get outside, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> um, even if you don't like getting wet per se, you're not a good swimmer, you go outside, find somewhere nice and private, do breathing exercises. Um, as uh, Geddes, as you mentioned earlier, the Avery at Turtle Center really is a really zen buddhist garden <laughs> it is a great place to come and clear your head um go for a walk go for a walk in the afternoons after the mosquitoes die down you know it's a little hour a little hour window when those sand flies and mosquitoes come out but after that have a night walk after your dinner um clear your head get outside do some deep breaths even if it's in your yard you could spread a blanket under a tree take some time outside and just make it kind of a personal initiative yeah, yeah. Well, I'll let anecdote. Just you know, uh, one time I was hiking with this lady who was a holistic medicine doctor. Mm -hmm. I don't know the exact term, and she told me she lived in Chicago, and she told me that she charges people fifty bucks an hour <laughs> for for uh, some kind of therapy. I forgot the, the word it was, but what she does, she takes them for walks in the woods, and she the way she explained it to me is that. There's so many benefits just for getting out there in nature, especially for people who live in cities. So one, you get audio therapy. The wind in the trees, the birds singing, all that kind of stuff. You know, very calming. Think of the nature sounds that people play yeah. in the background Lowers when they want to your blood pressure. Reduce your blood <laughs> pressure and that kind of thing. Two, visual therapy. Earth colors, browns, yellows, yes. are very calming. And greens are very calming colors. Three, and this is one I didn't think about. It said pheromones. Plants produce pheromones. Yes, they do. You don't smell. You don't actually smell them, but they create they they create uh, hormonal reactions in your body. You know, produce endorphins and, and all those kind of things and help you relax and de-stress. So just being like when you said, just being out there in nature is a big benefit for us. And you know, you, you read more and more about people getting into this thing, especially when during COVID lockdown time, more people. We're outside, We're outside than outside. ever before. Yeah. before. Yeah. <laughs> As someone yeah. who's always at the beach, that's the most I've ever seen people on yeah, the beach. Yeah, the more people I saw, I saw more people entire almost in forty years time than I saw <laughs> than I seen out. That's amazing. Yeah. Know, so yeah, and, and like it was said earlier, we live in the beautiful Cayman Islands. People are paying thousands of dollars to enjoy what we have. So yeah. why can't we enjoy it for free? I mean, you touched upon smell. Like my mom loves the smell of fresh cut grass, and <laughs> I'm a little weird. I like the smell of fresh rain on a hot pavement. That's one mm -hmm. of my favorite smells. So when you said that, I was just like, yeah, maybe I should go outside in the rain a little <laughs> yeah. bit more to actually enjoy Walking my Walking in the rain smell. too for those that are uh, would like to live life on the edge. <laughs> Walking in the rain is one of the most magical experiences ever. It's one oh, of my yes. favorite things to do. Yeah, I think people got... And swimming in the rain, going to the beach in the rain is a great time as well. Yeah. 
a long time ago as, as kids i'm sure you used to run around and play in the rain now people now it rains and <laughs> i see people running out of a pool to go shelter because it's raining <laughs> it doesn't make sense yeah. as long as it's not a thunder and lightning storm you're yeah. fine yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah you can definitely enjoy it reducing plastics that is a big one especially for us at the turtle center because turtles and plastics don't mix plastics are out there in the environment they're one of the biggest well the biggest scourges in the you know marine environment not only affecting turtles but affecting all marine life you know so reducing plastics is such a big deal for us uh, partnering with junk as we mentioned earlier but i'm sure you guys have some other tips maybe or, or comments that you can give yeah not many people really realize just how bad plastic is affecting our oceans we used to throw plastic out and we thought plastic broke down and it does just to much smaller pieces of plastics called microplastics and it's been found in the deepest part of our ocean in Mariana's Trench it's been found in many marine species but not only that plastic has been found in the blood of human beings too so yeah. it definitely affects us <laughs> just as much as it affects the animals in the ocean so doing little bits to reduce plastics not only helps them but it helps us in the long run too so I always try to carry a reusable plastic or a reusable water bottle with me. Sometimes they can be a little expensive. It depends on just how high end you want to go with your water bottle. But I guarantee you just by refilling that, you're saving yourself money, but you're also saving the planet in the long run too. Bring a reusable shopping bag when you go to the grocery store. Doing these quick and simple changes, especially here, where they charge you for plastic bags now, once again, saving the planet and saving yourselves money. Maybe not using the little plastic produce bags either. I right, guarantee yeah, you I don't need it. Um, there's <laughs> places, I believe, are gift shops, stores like Goodness, they sell wax wraps that you can reuse to wrap your sandwiches and just wash them off and reuse, I believe, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does the gift shop still have them? They did have before. If not, I believe there is a local store called Goodness as well that has them. There are also little mesh bags that they sell at the supermarkets too, little mesh produce bags yeah. that you can use instead. I definitely mm -hmm. have some of those at home. And definitely avoid littering. We just had junk on here <laughs> talking about the different ways you can recycle at home and different tips you can use to recycle. So just make sure everything you're throwing away goes to a proper receptacle instead of on the ground. And if you see it, pick it up. Don't just always walk across it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try yeah. to pick it up. Yeah. Like I say, I take them to the center and tell all our kids that visit there, pick up three pieces of plastic a day. Well, maybe you might, maybe you might not. But that thought is in your head, and you, we build that sense of environmental responsibility in the kids from early. Definitely. So three pieces of plastic. doesn't seem like much, but the main thing is to get into the habit of it. And then we have our another our last laugh. form, which is <laughs> getting in the water. You know, again, we live in the beautiful Cayman Islands. We have some of the most pristine waters on the planet. Why not enjoy it? Other people do. So why don't we? Uh, so do you guys go in the water? Yeah, yeah get your it. toes wet. Even if you can't swim, <laughs> get mm -hmm. your toes wet. And not the pool, the ocean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, we have two water babies here. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, yeah, I mean, this is a the Cayman Islands heritage. Well, Caymanians are supposed to be born with salt water in their veins. You know, whether it's on a boat or in the water. You know, yeah, safety is an issue when you have kids and you're not a strong swimmer, bring them down to the Turtle Center and they come to our snorkeling lagoon. We have tons of lifeguards on duties um, at our and at the marine lagoon as well so there's all sorts of alternatives oh yeah yeah but while you're, while you're out there you just gotta appreciate because if you love it you'll protect it <laughs> you know, so get out there even if you don't get in the water like Wendy said you can sit on the edge and enjoy the ocean you know makes you feel good you know, who doesn't like to just sit and relax and hear the waves the surf running up the beach Exactly. Yeah. And you, you can do a two for one combo. You can use reef safe sunscreen and yes. save the planet that way too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just that. Or like we talked about, pick up trash, take a bag with you when you go to the beach. And if you see any tiny pieces of trash or plastic, yeah. pick that up. And for all the fur parents, take your pets out. <laughs> <laughs> like I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take your animals for a walk. I guarantee. Well, Maybe not a cat. Cats and waters. <laughs> <laughs> Cats and waters sometimes don't mix well. But if your dog loves the ocean, 
I'm trying to do this more, so I encourage it to you. If your dad, if your dog loves the ocean, try to take them out a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Of course, right. of course, <laughs> making a last plug for the for our coastlines, our mangroves. You got to mention mangroves because our oceans would not be our oceans without mangroves. Well, certainly around the Cayman Islands. If at any time you have to, if you have to do any kind of development or you know anybody doing developments, encourage them to leave mangroves. You, know, you don't have to wipe out the whole thing. They're very important to not just protecting our coastline, but to our coastal ecology and just keeping the, our oceans clean. Mangroves filter the water that keeps it, that makes it beautiful and clear like mm-hmm. that we have also around the Also in nursery mm-hmm. habitat. Yeah. Very important nursery habitat. Yeah. All right. So those are just a few things that we just, that we discussed today, at Earth, talking about Earth Month. And, you know, again, we encourage you, even if you don't get to participate in all the activities this month, think of it as Earth Year. You know, the Earth isn't to go away. You have to take care of it all the time. Just like you have to kick it, clean your house, clean your yard, well, you have to take care of our planet. And now we're going to turn it over. We're going to get back to some business here. I'm going to turn it over to Wendy. She has some messages for you guys talking about Cayman Turtle, what we're doing at Cayman Turtle Conservation and Education Center. All right. So we're wrapping up what is our first episode of The Green Scene brought to you by the Cayman Turtle Conservation and Education Center. This is pretty exciting. If you want to hear more from us, we'll be here every Saturday at 11 a.m. And for those of you listening today, um, any of you who are able to make it out to the Earth Day cleanup um, by the Chamber, sponsored by Chamber of Commerce, a 50% off entry for anyone who comes in their cleanup shirt to the center today. Also, just to keep you up to date with things that are happening at the park all week, um, every day, or sorry, every weekday, Monday to Friday, we have our Shark Talks and Feeding. Our Shark Talks are at 10.30 a.m. Monday to Friday, and our Shark Feedings are at 11 a.m. Monday to Friday. We also have our Avery, and that is seven days a week. Come out and see our collection of tropical birds, um, local and from around the Caribbean. You also get a chance to feed them. We have three different kind of feeding methods, and it's quite a cool experience as well. And on another note, it is also nesting season here at the Turtle Center. So come out to see our babies and come and take a look at our hatchery. Our hatchery is filling up day by day with hundreds of eggs that we are collecting. And babies will be out for release during the summer months pretty soon. So always keep in touch for our volunteer opportunities. And you can get in touch with us at info at turtle.ky. A top tip for locals that we'd also like to share is to get yourself an annual pass and enjoy unlimited access at the center all year round. You can also find this information on our website at turtle.ky. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and we look forward to a start of a great show with you. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. You've been listening to The Green Scene, hosted by Cayman Turtle Conservation and Education Center. Catch us every Saturday at 11 a.m. right here on Bobo 89.1 FM. We're inviting you to our new show.